Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of grace, God of mercy, God of comfort, we come unto you this morning and we thank you for another day, your mercies, which are new every morning. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, specifically for your grace. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for a God that has got no limitations. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for the good fortunes, your everlasting life, your love, your thankfulness, your greatness, your blessings, your power, your everything, Lord God, that you bestow upon us. We ask you, Lord, Heavenly Father, as we come to your place of worship, Lord God, we, the church, we ask you for your presence to be among us. Let your spirit dwell upon, upon us here this morning, Lord God. We also ask you to touch those that are at home, Lord Heavenly Father, that cannot be with us in our, in our presence this morning. But Lord God, specifically we ask you that your word, Lord God, come fall upon us this morning, Lord Heavenly Father. May the Holy Spirit reign within us, Lord God. May it cleanse our hearts, Lord God, and let us draw closer to you, Lord Heavenly Father. Let us become still and know that you are God that is always in control. Whoever comes here this morning, doesn't matter what our challenges may be, Lord Heavenly Father, we serve a God, Lord God, that will reign forever and ever. And we come unto you this morning, Lord God, and we ask you to embrace us with our problems. It's only you that knows them, Lord Heavenly Father. And we ask you, Lord Heavenly Father, that the place that we run to here this morning, Lord God, is we running to you, Lord God, to be healed, to be touched, by restored, Lord Heavenly Father. And we come unto you. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it fall this morning on each and every one. But Lord Heavenly Father, we ask you to use me also, Lord Heavenly Father. In my flawness, Lord Heavenly Father, I ask you also, Lord, Lord, to uplift me and strengthen me. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray this, Lord God. Amen and amen. Greet each and every one in the wonderful and the blessed name of our dear Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Those that are at home, I trust that you're well and that you are blessed and with us in the spirit. Don't you just love backing the underdogs? I love it. I love backing the underdog, always. And, and the pure joy of doing that is basically the determination that comes from those people. They know they, they might not win, but they know they've got a small chance in winning. They've got a very, very small chance. And, and, and in saying so, you know what? I know that, you know, in sports you find that because that is where they most, the, the, the most of the time when they use it. And, and somehow if, if, you know, going through, you know, the life obviously, some of us have witnessed this, you know, in that presence, in that moment, you know, whether it's at the stadium, in a free state stadium or whatever, you, you, you witness that, especially when the people, they, they lift up their trophy, victorious, you know, it, it was all worth a determination, you know, it makes us known that nothing is impossible. You know, the celebrations, for instance, the matriculants, when they re re receive the, the results in, in, in January, for instance, now, you know, they know, some of them, you know, they are in doubt and fear, like many, many other things, and, and we, you know, it's the, the persistence, the commitment, the drive, but it's and, you know, it's the entire uh, teamwork that, that goes with that. And eventually when you seal that victory, you can rejoice. You know, you can rejoice in, and, and be glad in whatever you do. Now, when you go to the uh, a restaurant, sometimes you are so filled up. You want, um, you, you ate the starter, you ate uh, the main meal, and then you had some dessert. And then at the end of the day, you tell the waiter, you know what, bring me a doggy back. Bring me a doggy back. I, I want to take this home. I paid for it. You know, I want to take it home. The Canaanites, what we are talking about this morning, they were evil people. I just want to remind you where I'm going to with this this morning. You know, if you take us, you know, with respect said, we love Easter, our pickle fish. Now, that's a tradition. You know, if you don't have pickle fish, they say, you know, you don't celebrate Easter. Now, the Canaanites, they were evil people. They idolized and worshipped the wrong things. And God didn't like it. Actually, God, you know, put them one side. And um, in saying so, they, they worshipped demonic, you know, idols and sacrifice. They even sacrificed their children to these gods. They had a god that they called El, and there was something else. You must also remember, somebody that came from this um, Canaanites was Jezebel, and we know what Jezebel used to do. She hunted men down and she killed them, and they were afraid of her. 
And somewhere in, 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 in Revelations, it says that, you know, as much as God tried, I think it's in, in, in Revelations 3, I'm not sure. He says, as much as I tried, you know, um, I, don't, I, I can't recall now where it is, but he says, you know, as much as I tried that woman, Jezebel, to come to a census, you know, she didn't want to listen. I, I will find it, I'll, I'll get to it now. But the thing is, these people, I just want to go quickly. What was the relationship with them? Um, if I go to uh, Deuteronomy 9, you know, verses 5, it says, It is not because of your righteousness or your uprightness of your heart that you go into the, and possess the, 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 the land, but because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord your God drives them out from before you, and that they may be fulfilled the word which the Lord swore to their fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, if I go to 1231, it reads as follows. You will hear later on, we talk about the crumbs under the table, and we talk about the little dogs, as I read here. Um, chapter 12, verses 31. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. For every, every abdomination to the Lord which he hates, they have done to their gods. For they even burned their sons and daughters in the fire for their, for their gods. Now, 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 you must listen where they are going to. Here's a demon-possessed child. Now, as I said about us and our pickle fish, it's a tradition. So the Canaanites never went out of that evilness. Now, we're talking about 5,000 years before the coming of Jesus Christ. And they still remain the same. It, it never changed. And whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. So you shall not add to it, nor take away from it. Joshua fought against these people. And these people were very rebellious. They, 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 they were like this, you know, this wicked, this saw, you know, you got a, a, a saw, you put a plaster on, it doesn't heal, you put another, and, and that was what these type of people were. They was less sabbatic group of people, you know, that they didn't want to change. And 5,000 5, years down the line, here comes Jesus Christ, and he meets up with this, with this Canaanite lady. And, Jen, and they, they, they were a small nation. You know, they, they were between the borders of the Jews and the Gentiles. Now, the thing is, the Gentile doesn't really describe, you know, who someone is, but rather who they are not. Because you must also remember, Jesus is very gentle and kind-hearted. He accepted everyone. Everyone. And in saying so, you know, we hear about this woman who approached Jesus Christ to heal a daughter who is, the Bible recall tells us, she was severely demon-possessed. Now, that thing came with her all these years. Because I can still say, I can, I can in my own opinion, they still idolized these gods. And he didn't leave her. So, 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 you know, this woman was desperate. This woman was desperate. And the thing is, this woman, she actually says, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this, but just a little, you know, the crumbs of your table, just a little bit of that salvation. I know I don't deserve those crumbs. Now, now let me quickly go to you. When we, go, when we, when we do the, 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 commun the communion, it says, yeah. And something that we, that we as, commun as congregation read with the communion, it says, we do not presume to come to this table merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness when we come here. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs unto your, under your table. So we also say that. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs under the table. But you are the same Lord. It's the Lord that never, Micah says that he's the Lord that never changes. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And here's this woman. And she says, Jesus emphasized that it is more important, you know what, what in, in, the, in the previous verses he says, it's more important, you know, from what is coming from out without us. You know, from verse, in the same chapter, verse, verse 10, I, check, uh, I think. He says, it's more, he doesn't worry what is going in, but what is coming out. We know sometimes, you know, how we say things. Sometimes it comes come up wrongly. And we find ourselves in the wrong side. Now these Canaanites, Jesus knew them. And the thing is, what God wants to make known to us is, you know, the, 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 maybe this woman has tried several times. Now, obviously also this woman, like many other people in the Bible called Jesus, uh, 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 the son of David. 
Because he was, right in the beginning of Matthew 1, it says that he comes out of the line of David. And it was professed that he came from the line of David. And by the, the, the beggar did that, the blind man did that. He says, so, uh, 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 um, the son of David, you know, heal me. And that was, you know, a prophetic announcement to know that they will be saved. The son of David. And God and Jesus hears her. And he says, help me. Now, 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 I just want to stop there. She says, help me. Now, first of all, he ignored her. But then, isn't that the same way our prayer life is? Nothing happens because our prayer life is, we come. Now, the, let me quickly go there. Matthew 11, with the disciples. The same people that walk with Jesus Christ. They says, Matthew 11 says, he says, Lord, they, the disciples, Lord, teach us to pray as John has taught his disciples. And then Jesus taught them to pray. Matthew, Luke 18 verses 1 says the following. It says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. What does it say about this woman? This woman wanted to change her way. In John 10, Jesus Christ makes it known to them. Now I just want to take you what, 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 what this good God is that we are serving. He says, he says, there are, there are other sheep. Sorry, I'm at the wrong, I'm at Luke, sorry. That's why I couldn't find it now. He says, there are other sheep, not of this pen. He says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, you will be saved. And will, you will come in and, and out and find green pastures. He says, I'm the good shepherd. I give my life for my sheep. But he says, you know, I have also got other sheep, not of this pen. Now, he says, he makes it known. They are still not worthy, but they can come and they become worthy when they come to me. So this woman shouts, help me, Lord. And immediately he says, oh, woman of faith, you are being saved. Now, our prayer life is sometimes like that. Our prayer life is sometimes the normal thing. We don't, uh, we're not humble enough to sit on our, on our knees to say, Lord, I am in dire strait. But you know why? Because it's of pride and ego. This woman forgot about everybody else. She forgot about her, her bosses, maybe her Canaanite bosses, her Canaanite idols, her Canaanite. And she humbled herself and she made a prophetic announcement, Lord, help me. In that moment, God helped her. And the thing is, what about this woman is, she did not want, listen, remember last week I said about James 4 verses, verses, verses 7 that says, you know, that we need to submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee away from us. And this is what this woman did. She did no longer worship idols. She worshiped God at that moment in time. And then the Bible tells us this woman's daughter was saved. Now I want to tell you, we in the month of, 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 of which I don't agree with, the month of, 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 of August, which is woman month. Woman month must be every day. Every day of our life. It's like repentance. People say, we need to have a repentant heart every day. We cannot when somebody says, come to the Lord. We cannot just say when it's abuse of money in December. Now it's, we need to honor each and other on a daily basis. And the thing is, this woman, she pleads to Jesus Christ. She says to, to help her. He, she says unto him, son of David, come unto me. So we find ourselves now, and this woman, she comes and she prays. Now I want to tell you about a woman's faith, a mother's faith actually. Here's a pure example again. We spoke about Ruth. We spoke about Hannah. We spoke about Mary. We spoke about all these other women in the Bible that had competent, irreplaceable faith. If I have to put it that way. This woman was so boldly. I mean, she honors no longer the idols. I want to give that again to you. No longer the idols. She gives honor to God. To say, God at that moment in time, you shall have no other God besides me. What happened in her prayer life at that moment in time? The shackles came off. No longer was her a daughter. That just shows you the faith that we have. And the faith that we can expose sometimes in front of those that in front of those that think they are much more worthy than what we are. 
And here comes, and that is exactly what Jesus wanted to do because Jesus says, and I want to take it back why he says, he says, he only comes for, 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 um, he says here, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We are all lost sheep. Let me take you to Deuteronomy 14. He says here, 14, verses 1. You are the children of the Lord your God. You shall, you shall not cut yourself to shave the front of your head of the dead. You are the children of the Lord your God. God sees us, each and every one of us, as his children. He's no grandchildren. There's no great-grandchildren. Everyone is, our, is, is, a, is a child of God. Now, now, these disciples, they say again. He says, they said with the, two weeks ago with the feeding of the 5,000, let's just send them home. They say, yeah, Lord, let her go away because she's running after us. And I want to read that to you if you missed it. They said, yeah. The disciples came and urged him saying, send her away for she cries out, cries out after. You must remember, you think that the disciples was these good people. You think that these disciples was already worthy to follow Jesus Christ. They had to go through the process. It's like us, you know, in, in, in our, you know, when you feel that you have reached the ceiling, when you study, for instance, you want to do something else because you want to equip yourself. You want to empower yourself. You want to become more visible. You want to become more intellectual. Same with sports. Same with anything else. You want to do something. Now, 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 why do I say so? Let us quickly go to, to, to Mark 6 verses 52, which has the following about these disciples. It says, again, they were about to go and feed people. Let me just take you there. 6 verses 52 says the following. For they had not understand about the loaves because their hearts were hardened. Jesus asked them, where is the bread? They didn't understand because their heart was still not in the place where Jesus wanted them to, 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 to be. Uh, the same 8 verses 17 says the following. Uh, Mark, sorry. If you want to go check it up, it says the following. It says, but Jesus being aware of it said to them, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? What Jesus is trying to tell us, you know, are we still coming to church and we still do not want to let him in? Here's a woman that God allowed into her life, a woman that was, you know, we, we can assume what that woman maybe looked like. We can assume at that moment what it, that that woman was. But Jesus allowed her in. How hard must our hearts... This, this, this scripture is about our prayer life, our faith life, our persistence. And do want, you want change. Don't we want change in our lives? You don't understand what God can do if he can bring down the, the shackles of a woman that was, you know, abandoned maybe by somebody. You can imagine, how, how do you take your child, you know, to a wedding that is demon-possessed? She will, she will disturb everything. And the thing is, the very heart of sin is ego. It comes, when it comes to Jesus Christ, we need, forget about your status. Forget about what you stand for outside of the church. Because when we come to church, we need to humble ourselves. And this is what the woman did. Because Jesus Christ is the church. And then he says, you know what? If we surrender our ego, he will change our entire lives. But the thing is, we need to submit our, we need to make a groundbreaking, you know, endorsement on our life, if I have to put it that way. We need to do that because we, if we do not surrender, you know, the, the thing is, if we continue to be like, and we do not ask God, you know, to examine our hearts, to bring a change, we need to pray, God, I need a change in my life. I need you to help me to bring a change. I need you to, to, to come unto me because I cannot hate Gwen or Mervyn forevermore. I cannot speak about them better, but I need you to bring a change around me. And the change is to, like Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. At that moment in time, Jesus portrayed love. And what does 1 Peter 5 verse 6 says? He says, let me just get to it. 5 verse 6 and 7 says, Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. This woman did it. That he may exalt you in due time. God did it for this woman. Casting all your care upon him and he will care for you. But he says, 
Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking. Now, I want to ask you this. You get into jail, or they catch you, and you got that one phone call that you make. And that one phone is your family. Call the lawyer, come bail me out. Call the lawyer, come bail me out. I don't want to be here. Do you think that how, how much we are in jail? And the one man that went to the cross and he died for our sins. He paid the bail money for our sins for free. That is what God, and here he bails out another woman for the child. It doesn't cost us much. You see, faith cannot rest on the concept, but it must be centralized on the person which we call Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That is why this woman says, Son of David, you know, Son of David, you know, help me, rescue me. You see, Jesus wants sometimes to push us. He wants sometimes to invite us, and we don't even know that. Sometimes our hearts are so, like I read it last week, he says, you know, these people, their hearts is so far away from me. They give me praises with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. That means our hearts is still hardened. Today, we've got this lesson about this woman. Her inner faith saved her, and she made her faith public to everybody to hear. And what had happened, he says, oh, little woman, you, your faith has saved you. You see the rest of the, 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 the other people that God has also, that also, you know, saved. He only spoke about them, about their faith. And the faith that they came unto him. Do you, do you, do you, do you understand why Jesus was first silent? And it's not because he ignored her or whatever. He wanted to see what is your next reaction. What is your next reaction? And that, that is the thing about, 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 about Jesus he, he, and, and, and God. He wants us to put us through difficult circumstances first. You cannot say that I know about married life if you've never been married before, living with somebody else's uh, uh, daughter or son and one, under one roof. We know how difficult that is. We know. We know how difficult that is, you know, to come into a place and you do not know somebody else. And the thing is, God says, that we need, don't build our prayer around our life, our own lives, but build your life around prayer. Maybe this woman did it. Maybe how many times she heard about this Messiah that was coming. Jesus de 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 declared the greatness of, of this woman's faith that saved her daughter. J.C. Ryle said this about this, this daughter. This is what J.C. Ryle said. She was hopeless, she was desperate as her case appeared, but she had a praying mother. Family is priority to God. Family is priority to the house of God, which is the church. Family, friends, and everybody else, he says unto us, that you, 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 each and every one of us, you know, whether we're in a relationship, whether it's a relationship with God, you, you, don't you think that God thinks about this the same way? You deserve to be, the, you deserve to be filled the same way as you pour. So if you give everything and you do not get back, this is what your God does. I'm giving you everything. He says, come unto me when you are weary or when you need rest. My yoke is easy. I am a gentle, kind-hearted person. I will help you. That is the thing about Jesus Christ. This woman didn't give up. She recognized her unworthiness because of traditions and cultures that came away through. She didn't want to have that life anymore. What about us? Do we still want to have that life or say, you know what, I, I'm still in, yes, we, I, I said it several times, we can enjoy our life. But don't forget about Jesus Christ. Don't forget that he saved us. Don't forget that he's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the, the, true, the, the true life, the resurrection and the ascension and the one that will come back again. He says unto us that we should not just, you know, repent on that day when he is coming. He says unto the, 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 the oh, man of little faith, why do you watch upon the sky, you know, for, 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 travail ons nog staan en wag nog vir God, moet ons die werke van God doen. Die Heere bleed die Heere. Die Heere bleed die Heere. Die Heere gaan nooit verander. And the thing is, the thing about this unbeliever, you know, we find ourselves in the, in the same situation that, you know, the best way to increase your focus, think about this woman, the best way to increase your focus is, you know, to decrease your distractions. 
He says, increase our faith. And they said, teach us how to pray. Isn't there an example to say, God, increase my faith. Teach me to pray. Teach me about how much I, you know, come unto you to, to, to have this relationship. You, 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 this woman decided the following. This woman decided the following. I can no longer follow your traditions, man. I am not benefiting out of this anymore. I, I, I do not grow out of this. It's like having, you know, I'm going to go to a relationship, you know. How, 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 how do you going to go, you know, continue a relationship with work, whatever it may be? How can you grow if nobody adds value to you? How do you grow? How do you excel? How do you succeed if anybody doesn't add value to you? And this woman saw this in the next way, the, in the following way. The longer you live in somebody else's shadow, the longer it will take for you to play catch up. This woman had a demon-possessed daughter. And she wanted to make a way to change. And her, her, her great faith illustrated the strong connection between her faith and a relationship in the unfavorable conditions with God. Let us to go back to, to the guys that was in the boat with Jesus Christ. He rebuked them. He rebuked them when they, when they hid away. But he still, he, still, he, still, he still came with peace unto them. He, Jesus rebuked the disciples not because of the human tendency of their fear. Because they, they were distracted because of what he can do. God could protect them. Jesus was there to be with them. Jesus can bring them salvation. But they were in fearing nation in a little boat. That is what we are going through. We need to evolve. We need to evolve and we can only evolve if we're going through that baptism of fire as the same as this woman has gone through. We need to require by going through that same trials and faith not being tested is a faith waiting to be failed. A faith not being tested is a faith waiting to fail. I'm going to tell you, however, however, we still need to, you know, be obedient and we still need to respond. We still need to be obedient and we still need to respond. We can still say, God, I still believe in your goodness despite of my trials, God. I still believe in your goodness despite of my trials, God. Lord, I, I, I still believe in your plans for, your, for, for my life and death of my children. Never forget about your family. Never forget, just, just think about yourself, Lord, but also my family and my children. Despite my pain, my suffering, my, in, my, my times that I've been going through all these challenges. God, I know that I'm, I still believe that the things that, despite my weaknesses that I have, despite everything, everything else, Lord, despite all the things that, that like a massive mountain in front of me, yet, Lord, I know that your grace is sufficient for me. I know that your mercy is, this is what this woman did. This is what we can achieve in life. God loves the humble and he will exalt the humble. God loves us because he knows that we cannot take care. That is why Philippians 4, verse 6 says, just get to it quickly, it's on uh, the side. It says the following, 4, verse 6, and says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. That is the God that we must serve. That is the God that we must, we must, we must bow, bow back to and, and bend over to. We need to have a faith that comes unto God to say, you know what, God, I need to humble myself. These disciples, they wanted to send this woman away because their heart was hardened. How many times do we do it? How many times do we do not want to pray for somebody else? I want to tell you this morning, Jesus says unto this lady, your faith has saved you. Everybody, sometimes find ourselves in a hardened position. Maybe we are sitting here this morning with so many doubt and we do not want to submit to God. It's not just by coming to, to God. You know, it's, 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 it's something, you know, in essence saying sometimes, and I, and I say this with a lot of respect to everybody else out there. Everybody. When we praise and worship, we say, you know, that like the song said, Holy Spirit, come down on us. God wants us to make us known. The Holy Spirit is within us. We do, know, we do not need to go any further. We need to rely on him to come at any given time to him to pray. And he is the intermediator between, the mediator, sorry, between us and God. It's through our prayer life. It's through our faith. It's through our relationship. The, the, our, our, 
I want to guarantee you, I want to show you, the Holy Spirit is within us. And that Holy Spirit, when he says unto us, I, I will not let anything come to you and, and hurt you. Or, or God wants us to know us, I am with you. I will always be with you. I will relieve you. I will uplift you. I will strengthen you. You do not need to fear. doesn't matter what comes your way. No longer does you have to worry about, you know, you, you, you might say to yourself, but I still not have, you know, have the bitterness that I had for, 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 for Eugene. I, don't, I still don't have the forgiveness that I had for, 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 for Eleanor or the forgiveness that I had for, for Bridget or the thing that, I, I, uh, that, that I'm, I'm, I, I still need to be tested before I do that for, for, for Eileen. The thing is, God knows your heart. He says at that moment in time, you need only to come to me. Don't worry about, I will work on it. But submit yourself. Our faith will not grow stronger if God doesn't put us through spiritual challenges or life trials. I want to tell you that. And this woman went through a trial. No one can teach you lessons about life if you do not understand it and if you do not go through it. In conclusion, I want to say this this morning to you. We might say that I am a person of faith. Yes, I, I, I'm here. I'm 59 years old. I'm 100 years old. I got here through my... But what if your faith lets you down? What if your faith has already let you down by having this ego and not being a submissive person like this woman that comes unto, unto, unto Jesus Christ? You know, it's like having this faith and we plant the seed but every time we want to check how big is our faith and we dug up the seed to check, you know, how far is the seed. Then we put the soil back, water it again the next day. No, no, God says, you leave it everything unto me. Just submit yourself unto me and I will make everything. Our fear sees the worst that can happen. Our fear sees the downside of any situation. Our faith sees every situation as an opportunity to turn to God and put all trust in him and believe and, and, and favor. Favor will befall upon us. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to say this morning. I want to encourage you this morning. Only God can uplift you when you give recognition to him. You need to give recognition to him. Do not wait until such time that you say now is the right time. Today is the right time. Tomorrow is not the right time because tomorrow is not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed because the thing is what God wants to know. It's not about, you know, Houston, come turn your heart over to me. Now you must wear the biggest cross. It's not that way. It's just by acknowledging that Him is your, your Father, the Father, the Maker, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Savior, the, the Alpha, the Omega, the Beginning and the End. He is that one. He is the pure God. I want to tell you this morning. May God, may you never underestimate God. May God's blessing be upon each and every one. May God's grace be on each and every one. May God uplift you. May God strengthen you. May God remove the hardness of your heart. May he, make, may, may he make it gentle. May He make it pure. May He bring it unto you. As you know, as we say, that we must also, you know, whether we're not worthy at this moment in time and eating the crumbs under the table, He will make you worthy at such time. May God bless you. May God uplift you. May God strengthen you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray this. Amen. Amen. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that 